Too migrant, too Muslim, too loud is part memoir, part manifesto. It is my story. It is a tale of a political outsider fighting for her right and for the right of others like her to be let inside on our own terms. It's a pretty honest and no hold bars account of what happens when you shatter stereotypes and confront a system steeped in patriarchy, privilege, racism, and sexism. My book is also a call to action for a better world and a recognition that we do have the power to change it. I deliberately wanted to write this book while I was still in parliament. There are no rose colored glasses here. I really want people to know what parliament and politics really is like while I'm in the thick of it and what we can do to change it. Of course, this is my story, but this is also the story of many people of color who have migrated to Australia and made it home. Our stories should be told, our voices should be heard. It is defiant and sometimes even incendiary. I think people might be taken aback by its raw honesty and the amount and level of hate, racism and sexism thrown at me. My book does cover a wide variety of um, topics from abortion rights to racial, environmental and animal justice. And my unapologetic stance on these issues might surprise some people. Reliving the journey of my life to write this book was challenging during the aloneness that COVID-19 has thrust upon us. I've been separated from my mother, my daughter, my son, who are such a vital part of my life. Not knowing when I'll be able to see them or hug them during this time is painful. To be honest, ever since the revelations and allegations of sexual assault in the Australian Parliament, my place of work, it's been really hard to be there. Every time I've walked in there, my skin has crawled with disgust and I can't even imagine how the survivors of sexual assault must be feeling. Parliaments have long been aggressive adversarial places with mudslinging and shouting matches and a toxic mix of racism and sexism. And it is high time that we change the system and those within it. The staleness, maleness, paleness, and sameness of parliaments must be replaced with color, diversity, and variation. People outside parliament are the ones who have always given me hope. The Black Lives Matter movement, the women who marched in the tens of thousands saying enough is enough and demanding an end to gendered violence, the school strikers for climate action, all give me so much optimism for the future. Change can start with a phone call, a dinner table conversation, or a rally on the streets. So start wherever you can. Nothing is too big or too small to light that spark that will make a difference. For me, it's door knocking, chatting to people on their doorstep about what their vision for the world is, is exhilarating. It is also daunting. But to make a difference, we've got to feel the fear and do it anyway. This book will provoke and challenge readers and hopefully question their views on a range of topics. It will take them on a roller coaster ride with the highs and lows of my life and of our broken politics. But ultimately, it's a book that will leave them hopeful. Hopeful that we have the power to agitate, to dissent, to disrupt, to be loud, to create change, no matter who we are.